because as they say, you can always pick your friends, you can't pick your family. You're stuck with that. And part of that is there's a, there's a reason God set it up that way. Everybody in your family, no matter how difficult they are to you, they're there for a reason to teach you something. So you have no option but to deal with that. Friends are a little different because if you don't like somebody or they don't like so but friendship is as old as humanity. Um, you wonder too if it even you know if the animals it's interesting dogs you know will tell you right away whether they like you or not. I don't know whether they have an instinct to tell about friendship or not. But, you know, you can see two dogs or animals who connect with each other. So it, friendship somehow seems to be part of God's creation and God's plan for us. And no place is that more clearly seen than in the life of Jesus, who surrounded himself with friends. Not always good friends but he surrounded himself with friends. So just as a basic definition of friendship, I'm gonna just go with a simple one that says, it's a friend is a person you know and have a mutual bond of affection with. That, it's that simple. Um, what I have found about friendship is that friendship tends to develop in circles, you know? And you have acquaintances, you have good friends, you know. But when we're talking about friendship, we're talking about this group right in here that aren't just acquaintances, that are people that we trust. I think for all of us, if you've ever been burned in friendship, friendship is hard. It's hard to trust people. Because, you know, if you put your trust in the wrong person, it sours you from doing that in the future. But what it also does is it isolates you. And so you end up feeling very alone. Now, I find it very interesting that on Facebook you can friend somebody. That's what they call it. But that's really not what it is. You know, that's a misnomer, and I think what that does is it waters down what true friendship is. Because you talk to young people, you talk to millennials, and you know, they say, you know, how many friends do you have? Well, loosely. We talk about a friendly grocery store, or a friendly staff, or whatever. Friendly is different than being a friend. Friendly is when you're nice to people, all that kind of stuff and you're, you're kind, but a friend is someone that you have this mutual affection with, which really develops into a bond of trust. And most of us in the course of our life, if we have a few people right in here, we're pretty darn blessed. Now, with all the communication that goes on in our world today and all the people who friend each other and everybody in the world who knows what you had for supper last night and Facebook and all that, that kind of stuff, loneliness is still our biggest issue. You know, uh, the suicide rate, we talk freely about the suicide rate um, in, among our youth, which is growing. The suicide rate in places like Sun City is extremely high. They don't often get reported, but having done some work and those kinds of things, the suicide rate among our elderly is very high because of this. Why? Because a lot of times, as you get older, your friends, your lifelong friends die. And so, you know, when you're 70 or 75, it's hard to make a new friend who's gonna really stand by you. So what 
I just find the whole topic interesting. And, you know, for me, in my own personal life, you know, I always viewed myself as somebody who had a lot of friends and felt very blessed by that. Then I found out I didn't. And so what happens when you find out you don't, that's extremely painful. You, you find out that you know, people you thought were friends were people who wanted something from you. And that, that is, that never feels good. Great example of friendship is Jesus with the Apostle John. And what's interesting is about the Gospel of John, the writer of John, is that who writes about themselves in the third person. You know, we laugh about that, anybody who talks about themselves in the third person, which is what makes some Bible scholars wonder who wrote this in the Gospel of John. Did John write this about himself? Or is this maybe one of his followers who went back into what John wrote and added the one whom Jesus loved? Because every time, I think it's six or seven times in the Gospel of John, when it refers to John, the Apostle John, it always says, the one whom Jesus loved. Now, wouldn't that be a great thing for God to say of any of us, of Jesus to say of any of us, oh, you mean him, the one I loved. But there seems to be this, this bond of friendship between um, Jesus and John that is beautiful. And in fact, at the Last Supper, you know, one point where John lays his head back on the chest of Jesus, that it's that, that, that much intimacy between the two of them. And John was the youngest, so John would have been a teenager, and at the time, Jesus would have been about twice his age. So it, it clearly is not just based upon age. There's something different that friendship is based upon. There, there seems to be something, something much deeper than that. So a, a friend, when you talk about trust, you know, I think the hardest things for us to talk about have to do with money. It has to do with health issues, it has to do with sex, it has to do with embarrassing things that happen in our lives. A friend is somebody you can trust with that information. You know, it's, especially at this point in our life, you know, it's funny, younger people probably, $50,000 a year, and they're, they're telling you about that. When we get older, we get a lot more private about our finances. We don't want people to know what's there. So much so that sometimes people don't even tell their kids. And when they die, their kids have no idea what their parents own or that kind of stuff. So, but a friend is somebody that you, you can trust with that information. You can trust with that which seems most private. Um, and that's part of why that bond is so important. Now, when you start looking at the idea of friendship in the Bible, what I gotta tell you is, I find it interesting that the Bible throws out some cautions about friendship. And I gotta tell you, I was thinking this week while I was preparing for this, that for these classes on, on Sunday morning, people thank me all the time and say, hey, thanks for putting the work in, thanks for preparing, but I'm the one who benefits most from this. Because, you know, what I try to do is summarize stuff. So in order for me to summarize, I gotta try to take in all this stuff and sift it down to something. So, uh, you know, again, I find it interesting that when the Bible talks about friendship, it doesn't just talk about it in this, you know, this beautiful way up here and everything's beautiful and we should all be friends. It's gives us some cautions about friendship. And 
you know, again, we see in Jesus how his friends ran. You know, they say the heroes are the ones when there's a fire that run into the building. When everybody else is running away from the building. That's what friendship is. When everybody else is running away, the friend is the one who's running in. That's true friendship. And what happened with Jesus is the people that he gave so much to, the people that he was so close to, when push came to shove, where were they? Very human. And that's why I think, you know, when we think sometimes, you know, God's out there, he can't relate. Boy, could Jesus relate to this. He knew what it was to be betrayed. Not only by Judas, but even by Peter, who denies him. You know, so that's not surprising. So this is what some of the cautions that the Bible gives us about friendship. Psalm 146 says, Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. What's important about that is that ultimately we cannot put all of our trust in another human being. Our trust needs to be in God. Now, the Bible is not telling us not to trust other people. It's telling us don't put all your trust in another person. Don't put all your trust in uh, another friend. You put your trust in God. And to that extent, you share that trust with a few people. But understand that the people that you are trusting are mortals. And they can fail. Proverbs tells us, gives us a caution. It says, make no friends with those given to anger. Or you may learn their ways. Wow. You know, it's, it's interesting. I have a friend who's just a very angry man. And, you know, I work hard at being a friend to that person. But I'll tell you what, the anger scares me. And when you have somebody not who just once in a while, you know, has anger issues, but when you are close to somebody who approaches everything with anger, you know, when you're driving in the car with the person and they're, they're throwing the F word out of the car and they're yelling, mad at everything and everybody, that's like, it's contagious. You, you find yourself reacting to things and it becomes very, very unhealthy. So the Bible's even telling us that. 